Hello. Good afternoon. <laughs> your, your, um, it's muted on your side, uh, Prince. Oh, sorry. <laughs> How is everything? Oh, all is well. Thank God. How are you? How is everything? I, I'm great. I'm great. I'm excited to be here today. Likewise, hey, I'm really excited as well. Um, yeah. Hoping everyone joins us. We had uh, 41 registrants. Uh, okay. I'm hoping mm -hmm. that they all uh, come on. I've sent a reminder to them about 15 minutes ago. So, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have, I can see Jetroot and I see uh, Kennedy. So, hello, mm -hmm. Jet. How are you? Hi, Jetroot. Are you there? All right. Um, Kennedy, <laughs> hi, are you there? Okay. Yeah, Kennedy. Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> hello. Hi, Kennedy. How are you? Hey. I'm doing well. And you? I'm well, thank you. Thank you Great. very much. Uh, and Gertrude, if you can say hi, you can just unmute for a second and say hi if you are in a good space to talk as well. Um, mm -hmm. yes. Thank you very much, Lucia, for, for uh, you know, giving us this opportunity, you know, yeah. to, allowing us to learn from your worth of knowledge. Thank you very much. It's, uh, thank it's you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Well, we have four sessions, right? We, 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 we have planned to have four sessions all together, right? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. So what do you want to do? Uh, you want to wait for another five minutes? Um, okay. Yeah, we can do that. We can wait for that. Yeah. And, uh, let's yeah. Otherwise, we'll just work with what we have. It's okay. <laughs> no yeah, problem. Okay. okay. Let's wait for for another five minutes or maybe less, and then okay. um, proceed with what we have. Okay, sounds good. I'm just going to go get my cup of tea and I'll be back. That's fine. Okay. Move. Uh, okay. <laughs> then we're going to move uh, with, uh, with the why. Uh, we're going to talk about why social entrepreneurship is important uh, for yourself, for your organization, for your community, for your country. And then we're going to uh, uh, talk about why social entrepreneurship is important for um, the continent. Also, we are going to learn how to model uh, 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 or how to put in place a social entrepreneurship uh, 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 model. Uh, I'm sure you are familiar with, uh, many of you might be familiar with the business model canvas. Um, there is a, 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 a canvas for a, a, a social business model canvas that we're gonna use as a tool uh, for us to design our um, uh, business. So we are going to, uh, we're gonna be covering a lot of topics. Uh, I'm hoping that this is going to be interactive. Um, I'm hoping that, and I have the intention uh, uh, to create, actually to create impact uh, through this content, through these classes, to create impact and together uh, to see some uh, social entrepreneurs and leaders emerge. So we're going to cover a lot of things, theory, numbers. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, dive deep um, in terms of, deeper in terms of um, uh, the climate of social entrepreneurship in the continent. Uh, we are also going to come up do some research on numbers, uh, uh, what are the numbers, who uh, does social entrepreneurship, uh, since when, so we're going to talk about that as well throughout our journey. Okay, I asked you a question uh, where you're typing from, 
um, Accra, Ghana. Wow, nice, beautiful. Ghana, nice. Johannesburg, South Africa, beautiful. I've been to Johannesburg, but I've never been to Ghana um, before too. But I'm looking forward to go there one time. Um, in the near future, I believe, uh, and, and, and just enjoy the country there. Well, I'll start with me uh, by uh, introducing myself. Uh, my name is Lucia Fernandez Stanislas. I was born and raised in Angola. Um, I came to the US, I came to the United States in 1999. And uh, since 2013, I've been building uh, businesses in Angola and living in both countries, uh, the US and Angola. So um, how did I start my journey? I think it's important for you to know. Um, I started my journey when I was a teenager back home. And many of you probably attended the, uh, um, the conference a couple of months ago, and I shared a little bit of, about my, uh, my story, how I started. Uh, I believe I started as a social entrepreneur. I started as a social entrepreneur in my country, Angola, as many of you might know. Um, is a country that uh, had to go through war for about 27 years right after independence. So we had to find ways to survive as a country. We had to find ways to help other people uh, that were mostly uh, um, affected by war. So um, in 1992, uh, situation got really, really uh, bad. A lot of people migrated from the inside of the country into the, uh, uh, the coast, uh, to the capital of the country, especially children uh, that saw uh, their family dying because of war in the war and things like that. And they had uh, no place to stay, so they, they would stay in the streets. And I felt really moved by that, really, really moved by that because at the time I was a teenager and I thought it was a problem. So I started to think about solutions. I don't know how, but I knew that I needed to do something to help those uh, kids in the streets. So I, um, I co-founded a, a nonprofit organization at the time. We designed programs uh, to assist those kids in the streets uh, with food mainly. And also uh, we were assisting them with reading and math just to keep them occupied into uh, with something uh, help, helpful. So we did that. Uh, it was important to me. Uh, it really meant a lot to me. And that's how I began my journey. Um, and it didn't take much. All it took was um, actually a wish, a dream. I wanted to see change. And I saw a problem and I started to actually take action, take action. Just please note and write down as I tell my story and as I share my story with you. Um, then eventually I also joined other causes like the HIV AIDS. That's another problem that our continent has to face and has faced uh, all throughout the years. Um, it was great also, it was a great experience for me. I was learning. I didn't, exa I didn't necessarily know how to do it, but I know what to do. Okay, I know what to do. I'm not sure why you signed up for this class. 
I don't know, maybe the colors of the flyer <laughs> got your attention. Maybe, I don't know, my picture, my white <laughs> clothes and stuff. I don't know, the topics, I don't know uh, what actually uh, motivated you to sign up for this class. But for some reason you are here today, maybe you wanna do something new. Maybe you wanna do something different. You just need to know what is that one thing that you want to do. You have to be intentional, okay? Maybe that's one thing that I want you to uh, write down. What's your intention? Why did you sign up? What's, what's your motivation? I really want us to be engaged. I really want us to dive in and be immersed in this experience so that we will uh, uh, reap what we, we saw here throughout the, the, the masterclass. So the intention, and that part of my history really just was uh, highlighted by my intention. So what's your intention? Why are you here? Why did you sign up? Moving forward in my history, my little story in the world of entrepreneurship, I uh, came to the US in 1999, um, and when I got here, the, of course, the environment, uh, the climate is, is different for, it's a different reality. So I got here and I started to see the dynamics of how people make money. And that took me to my previous years as a person, as a, a young kid, as a teenager, uh, with this willpower to, to make a change, to help people, to create impact, uh, just to, to help help and do things. But I noticed at that point, looking back into my previous years, I noticed that the impact I was creating into those people's lives was short term, was short term. I could probably, metaphorically say that I was planting seeds, you know, creating impact into those people's lives. But at the end of the day, we need to do things, we need to create an impact that is sustainable, that is sustainable. I don't know how those kids are these days. There has been many years. Um, I don't know what paths they took after that uh, period of time, um, but I know that me, I didn't provide the tools for them to become independent. I was just giving them food, okay? So when I came to the US in, re in retrospection, I, I, I was analyzing all of those things and I said, I need to learn how to make money. If I want to create impact, if I want to contribute for change, I need to learn the different size, the different uh, branches of entrepreneurship. So when I came, I said, okay, how am I going to do this? How do I create independence through money? And how do I create autonomy through money? So I started learning business. And I was lucky enough to find mentors to teach me how to make money. That was a simple question. How do I make money? So note here that one, uh, uh, the first four years, I was uh, um, just depending on other people to help me help other people with material resources. But at this point, I wanted to learn how those people that were helping me help other people, um, how did they get those resources? How did they get that money? Note that there is a common denominator here, which is entrepreneurship, is to create something. It really means to create something, is to create value. 
okay, is to create value. Entrepreneurship, in short, means to create value. So I was creating social, social value when I was back home. And when I came to the States, I started to learn how to create monetary value, how to make money. And that was part of social, uh, uh, of entrepreneurship. So just start to write down because I'm just gonna uh, go with the flow, but write down the things that resonate with you, the things that actually are, uh, that you can apply into your life based on the intention and the motivation that uh, took you here, that made you sign up for this class. Okay, so I started to create businesses. I created. I was in the uh, in the uh, uh, finance uh, uh, insurance business in Atlanta. Then uh, uh, we went into shipping business. Uh, I went into um, what you call uh, catalog products selling at the time. Um, so many things that I was doing, providing translation services, providing all kinds of things. And I was creating so many businesses throughout the years and most of them failed, okay? Most of them failed. But the thing is, I was learning lessons. I was learning lessons. I was learning the craft. And this is very important. You are here to learn or to expand um, on what you are doing. You need to keep learning. It is very important that us as change makers, as social entrepreneurs, as leaders, we continue to learn, okay? And I wasn't afraid of failing. I just wanted to learn. I just wanted to, to see things happen. I just wanted to act. So that's one thing that, uh, you know, as I speak, uh, you're gonna get insights. Uh, I'm gonna digress a little bit from moment to moment, but just bear with me. That's how I teach. That's how I share my knowledge. So it is important that we create this mindset around the idea, around the notion of getting things done. Once we see a problem as social entrepreneurs, as leaders, we just start acting on it. That's the first thing, okay? But before you start acting, you need to know who you are and that's what we wanna uh, get into in a few moments, okay? So I'm, I'm talking about my story, right? And I started to learn and I'm introducing myself to you. So I started to learn entrepreneurship and, and, and uh, uh, throughout the years. And then at one point I decided to move from um, Atlanta, Georgia after 11 years. And I went to New York City when I went to New York City, and this is always a, a funny story, um, I just had $200 in my pocket. Like uh, uh, Brits, the ambassador from Ghana, I don't know if you know him, uh, he's a musician, I love him. Uh, he uh, released an album called uh, uh, The Afropolitan Dream. So when I went to New York, I kind of had a, a, um, a, a, an Afropolitan dream. And all I had was a dollar in the dream. Well, that's a rhyme uh, of Blitz the Ambassador. All I had was a dollar in the dream. So I went to New York and I did not have a plan. I did not have a plan. And when I got there, I started to panic, okay? But this is just one point of my story that I will expand. Uh, but one thing that we're gonna learn in this class is planning, okay? Is plan. We're gonna learn how to plan um, and we're gonna learn how to make things happen and how to bring things into fruition, okay? 
So I moved to New York and I love art, I love culture, and I started working um, in that field in New York. And I just pioneered, I started uh, a business there called a project called Many Tribes One Blood. And I was working with artists. I was really having a good time making money. But in one sense, uh, when we work with the creative field and the cultural field, it one, in one sense, uh, it is also social entrepreneurship. Because again, we create value, not only monetary value, financial value, we also create uh, um, social and cultural value, right? And, uh, and, and for the most part, it is a work, uh, what do they call it, work of love? So I was having fun, but I was at the same time learning, uh, I was managing a gallery. I was managing a couple of artists. I was dealing art. I was curating. I was doing so many things in the art and cultural war world. Uh, before I decided to go back home and started to actually build something in the continent, it was... Um, around the mentality of entrepreneurship, but I always say that me going back home because I wanted to give back, it became social entrepreneurship because it is an emerging economy. It is a developing e economy, Angola, right? It's an emerging uh, economy. So I was willing not only to make money, I was also willing to create impact. And that's how I consider myself a social entrepreneur. So I went back home and I started to work. You know, I was like a big fish in a small pond. I was having fun in the oil and gas industry. I created other businesses. I was uh, consulting. Um, I, was, I became a consultant because I had this set of skills uh, that actually allowed me to go uh, to, to many uh, um, fields as I wished. And as a business developer, that's actually my core business development, business development, organization development, uh, community, um, and so forth. So I went back and I started creating businesses. Uh, but please note the common denominator here. I'm always at, uh, uh, attempting to create uh, not only monetary value for sustainability's sake, uh, I'm also trying to create impact. And most importantly, um, I'm creating uh, social value. An entrepreneur has to create social value. A leader has to be self-motivated. A leader make things happen regardless of the challenges. He sees, she sees a greater vision uh, even when most of the people do not see it. So this is who I am. Um, I guess you can go to my social media and find out a little bit more of what I'm doing. I also uh, work with the cause of uh, women empowerment. And because of that, I am the president of a bilateral uh, council between India and Angola. Um, I am the WED ambassador, WED, uh, the Women Entrepreneurship Day uh, um, ambassador for my country. I, I actually just got promoted to be the ambassador for five countries, the Portuguese speaking countries of, the, of, of Africa. Uh, so I'm excited about this new challenge. Always reflecting all of these things that I do, I'm hoping that they reflect social entrepreneurship, okay? But before I need to be sure, I need to know who I am before I go into this journey. So if you have a pen and paper, we're gonna dive inside within 
and we're going to do a self inventory uh, to find out who we are and to see if we actually are prepared or we have the, the, the requisites to be a social entrepreneur, a leader social entrepreneur, or expand if you're already in the uh, field of social entrepreneurship, how to expand, how to enrich your, um, your practice, your business, your projects, whatever, I don't know. But it is important to start with the who. So for you to define who, who you are for the purpose of this class, I do believe that each one of us has a set of gifts, things that we do naturally, uh, things that we were just born with that are innate to, our, uh, to ourselves. These uh, uh, characteristics, I see a lot of uh, 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 talented people throughout the continent, people that sing, people that dance. And you probably noticed that some of them sing so well, even without schooling, even without going through training, it, it is just natural. Some people dance and they just, when you look at them dancing, it's just so amazing. How does that happen? What gifts do you have? What gifts do you have? Write it down, write it down. Those things that you do naturally, and it's not just in the arts, right? Uh, it can also be in the business world. Right, you probably write really well. Uh, you probably, when it comes to sales, you you just you're just so natural. It's it's like your your second nature. What is your gift? Number one. Number two. What are your talents? Is there a difference between gifts and talent? What are your talents? Okay. What are those, those things that, is not, that are not so naturally natural to you, but you are still able to do? What are those? Make a list of those. And I'm going to pause from time to time so that you can write those things down, down and reflect on those as well. I'm sure you've done this exercise many times in the past. Uh, I personally go, I, I, I tend to go back and, and do this exercise because uh, we evolve as humans, we evolve. So it is important that uh, we uh, do this exercise constantly, especially now that the world is so, is, is, is changing so drastically, you know. Uh, the world is changing because of the pandemic, because of the impact that the pandemic is causing in the countries, in the societies, it's just changing. The third thing is, what are your values? What are your values? What are the things that really shape your character? Is it honesty? Those things that are non-negotiable, you don't negotiate. I'm honest. I'm going to be honest for the rest of my life. No, this is it. Are you honest? Are you, um, what, are, what are your values? What are some of the values? Uh, are you proactive? Are you self-motivated, right? Some of the things that you hold as values, as principles, right? These are non-negotiable and they are very important for you to keep in your mind as you go throughout your journey and that identify you also in a sense. What are your passions? Before we go to uh, the passions, I'll take a minute so that you can write down your values, your principles, those things that you will not negotiate.
and I gave you some words for you to reflect, for you to think about. Prince said that at the end of the class, you might be tested. I'll probably just ask you to share if you can. What are your values? Write it down, write it down. What are your passions? Some people just have one passion, you know, something that really brings fire to you. Like it's uh, when, you, when, when you are into that atmosphere, experiencing um, that thing that is your passion, it, it, you feel a fire, a sense of fire within you. What is it? What is it that you have inside that you want to do alone with people? What is your passion? What motivates you? What inspires you? By the way, the word inspiration means in spirit. That means that you are in spirit. That's the root, the etymology of the word. So when you are living your passion, Time stops, <laughs> we, get, we get this sense that time stops and that we just want to be in the moment experiencing that one thing. For me, it's family. I like to enjoy. I, I enjoy spending time with my family. I have a three-year-old, my son, Marcus. And when he's dancing, I join him dancing. Just that atmosphere that we create between my son and my husband at home. Uh, that's just so beautiful. It brings tears to my eyes sometimes. Another passion that I have is to share knowledge, is to be with people, is to interact with people. Uh, teaching, if you will. Yeah, time stops too. If you put me around people, me just speaking, sharing, hearing from people, learning with people, people actually becomes my passion. <laughs> what is your passion? What are your passions? Okay, write it down. Then um, your purpose, okay? Uh, your purpose. And if you want to, you know, so that we can have this uh, room a little bit moving, if you want to share, just share in the chat too, you know, one or two words, feel free to do that. Okay. I know it's the first class. We're going to get hit it. Hopefully we're just warming up. I understand. I'm warming up as well. Let me get my tea. warm up a little bit more <laughs> what are your passions once you do the self-inventory you will know the kind of person that you are and that will take you to a positioning what's your position where do you stand where do you stand this is just something that is available to you right away we're not talking about skills here. We're not talking about the resume. <laughs> but I wish that people put those things in the resume as well. I think they do. Resume, CV, I don't know how you call it there in South Africa or Ghana, but the American English, we say resume. Um, so just write it down. Make that self-inventory before you go into your skills. What are your skills? What is it that you have been trained to do? Okay. Gift or talent is actually something that can be transformed into a skill if you get trained. Okay. If you have a gift and then you train, you work on that gift, on that talent, it can become a skill, okay? Some people develop their gifts, gifts or talents, uh, um, and some people don't actually. But when people develop skills based on their gifts and talents, they're more than likely to be successful. 
And that's a secret. Because <laughs> some people spend most of the years of their lives working on something that is not based on their passion, is not based on their gifts, is not based on their values, it's not based on their principles or, or, or purpose, it's not based on those things. And they just go about their lives not happy and happy. But, but as a social entrepreneur, as a leader, you have to have a mindset and a state of being that is happy, that is enthusiastic, that is inspiration so that you can continue this journey. That's one of the purposes of this exercise actually, because it's not an easy journey. Nobody tells you, okay, you're gonna build this big empire, uh, this big social enterprise, and it's just gonna be easy, no. That's why you need to know who you are. And that's how you start to uh, enrich your leadership life when you know who you are and when you have that present in your mind all the time. Okay. So the, 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 these are more, uh, so it, when we're thinking of gifts, talents, passions, uh, 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 values, uh, 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 your why, the purpose. I believe you are using the right side of your brain because sometimes it's more intuitive and because, and because it requires you to uh, go within, go within the right side of your brain and your heart and your heart, okay? So that's one thing. But when we start to talk about skills and, uh, and, and, and competencies, we go more into the left side of the brain to see, okay, what are my, you know, my, the areas that I've been trained? Um, is it, um, I don't know, uh, the medical field, engineering field, STEM, math, technology, social science, humanities, um, leadership, it's of management. Uh, what is your trend? What's your background? Where have you been spending the most time uh, learning? What subjects, what topics, history, anthropology? Now we start to move more into the academy, the academia, right? Where we go and read books and, and learn and uh, with teachers, with mentors, whatever. This is important for you to know, write it down as you move forward in this journey of social entrepreneurship. Also note that this is applied knowledge. This is why I speak, I tell my story, I give you uh, real life examples. I'm not making up theories. Yeah, I might talk about certain hypotheses and theories and um, just my thoughts because I have a humanities background on one side, science on the other side, art, uh, creativity. I work a lot with, with creativity and innovation as well. And speaking of innovation, social entrepreneurship has to do with innovation, but we're gonna get into that later when we start to dive in and when we start to talk about uh, the concept of social entrepreneurship uh, but now we are starting with the who. I introduce myself to you. Um, you guys told me where you're typing from. I see here, Leticia. Uh, just tell us where you're typing from. Uh, Hamsa, also tell us where you're typing from, uh, where you're <laughs> logging in from. Because um, uh, we can also take this opportunity for us to network, very important. If you are on this path of 
uh, becoming a change maker, or if you are, you want to expand your network. And remember, your network is your net worth. <laughs> your network is your net worth. So by this time, I'm assuming from Angola, from Morocco, yeah, welcome, Angola, welcome, Morocco, South Africa, Ghana. This is awesome. This is awesome. I'm so excited to be here this, this well, is this morning for me, it's afternoon for you. Um, so um, also just share Casablanca. Wow, Hamza is in Casablanca. Welcome, welcome. I like that tea there. Is it tea in Casablanca, the airport? I've always been. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hamza. Hello, hello. We're starting with the who today. We're starting with ourselves. We, we're doing a self-inventory before we embark into the journey of enriching, developing a social enterprise of becoming leaders. And I was saying that um, this is applied knowledge, it's practice, it's practical knowledge. It's not theory. I'm hoping that's not gonna be theory. Whatever we discuss here during the classes, during these sessions, I'm hoping that you will apply. I'm hoping that you will attach um, into what you're already doing or if you are new, I don't know what, what your motivations are, what your intentions are in this course. I would actually, uh, I would like to hear from you because I'm here talking by myself. I want to be, uh, I want to have this uh, interaction with you. I want to hear voices, if possible, hear anybody wants to share. What, what we have covered so far. Don't be shy, I don't bite. If you, if you cannot speak, at least write. I wanna hear your feedback. Why are you here? What's your motivation, right? What's your intention for the course? What's your intention for this masterclass? What do you wanna learn? What do you want to get out of here? What's your motivation? Why are you here? Share with us here in, on the chat. No? I'm checking my, my WhatsApp uh, messages. This is real life, guys. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we plan to be here for two hours. So this is what I have for you today. For you to be a leader, you need to know who you are. You need to be confident in your skin in order to influence other people. And for you to influence other people, in this masterclass, we will teach you how to become a leader in social entrepreneurship, okay? This is why we are doing this exercise, this self-inventory for you to know who you are, for you to get in touch with yourself, for you to go within and just converse with your own self. What's your intention? What's your superpower? Nowadays, people talk a lot about superpower. Somebody, Hamza. Hello for everyone. Hello. Everyone is, okay. Sorry. Do you I, have any questions, any comments, any sharings? Of course. Of course. Please uh, feel, firstly, feel free. Firstly, sorry for came in late. I didn't uh, join it for from beginning, but uh, I think I I heard a lot of a lot of ideas and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, interactions. So my question is uh, is the is the leadership 
is uh, the leadership is uh, a gift or uh, a value or or a skill. Mm -hmm. I'm writing it down. Okay, you want me? Do you have more questions, or you want me to answer right now? Gift, value, or skill? It can and, be uh, all of the above. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. About the, about the social businesses. Mm -hmm. So how how we can create a business from the bottom? Yes, good questions. Thank you, Hamza, for when, your question. And when when we have the when we have the good ideas and but we can't we can't uh, begin. I don't know, may, maybe it's a psychological or something else. And thank you for your for your ideas. Thank you so much, Hamza, for your questions. They are beautiful and nice questions. I'm sure uh, uh, that will trigger our thinking. Okay. Your first question has to do with leadership, right? Leadership being the power of, of influence. Okay. And you asked whether it is a gift, it is a value, or a skill. It's all of the above, actually. Um, when it is a gift, uh, uh, I don't know if you were here when I was defining what a gift means. I was putting in words that everybody can understand from my perspective. Gift is something that you do naturally, right? You can see kids in school. Actually, that was my case. When I was a child, I started uh, to lead when I was a child. And my parents always uh, gave me the space and the tools for me to uh, actually flourish or to let my gift come to fruition. So since I was a child, I was leading groups. I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I think I'm a leader and I think that's one of my gifts. And it is also my value. Because why is it a value? Because I believe that from that principle, from that value, I can do big things. And that's your third question, right? If I use leadership as my value, I will always try to um, do things with excellence because I want to lead by example. So if leadership means influence, if leadership means uh, uh, the power of influence other people, I want to have that as a value as a principle, especially when I'm building something. A skill, yes, it is a skill. Why is it a skill? Because I've been trained to be a leader. When you spend so much time doing something, you become trained. You go to school to study leadership. I, I, I actually, just a, a side note, I went to a, a, a program of John Maxwell and John Maxwell is one of the biggest, like one of the most famous leaders. He has written over 40 books on the topic of leadership. And so uh, since I identified that, that characteristic, that feature in me, I say, I wanna learn from the best. So I paid. <laughs> I went to the conference. I actually got a certificate uh, leadership uh, uh, from Maxwell, uh, John Maxwell team. John Maxwell team, that's the name. So it is a skill now. It is a skill. Uh, it means to solve problems. It, it means to uh, come up with solutions. It means leadership means so many things, but we're going to dive into that uh, uh, even more deeper uh, along our masterclass. And I want to keep you coming back as well. 
So social enterprise, that was your uh, uh, second question. How, your question started with how, how do I build a social enterprise from scratch, from the bottom, you said. Could you please write the author's name? What author? Uh, okay. Uh, Bits and what author? It, was it John Maxwell? Okay. Yes, the one who wrote books about leadership. Yes, yes, John Maxwell. He's an American guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, John Maxwell. So how to uh, uh, build a social enterprise from scratch? We're gonna go into, no problem. Uh, we're gonna go into the how. We're gonna use a tool that's called social business enterprise, uh, social business uh, model canvas. We are gonna uh, uh, go through that. I, I'm gonna walk you through that. I have used that tool for many, for my sessions, for my mentorship sessions, uh, for my training sessions, and that really works. And we're gonna use that for that class as well, for us to build a model for a social enterprise. But you know, the first step is what we're doing right now. Know who you are, know what your dreams are, know what your intentions are, all, all of these things, because everything is built from inside out. Okay, things are built, you know, a seed, it becomes you, you, you put the seed on the ground and you cultivate it, you water it, you, you put everything that is needed for that seed to grow. So what we're doing here today is to plant seeds um, and we, we are, we'll give you tools, but I'll just give you a, a step, a quick step uh, uh, by step, you know, a quick strategy, uh, just so you, you don't live here without nothing, okay? how to build a social enterprise. You first need to identify a problem. Number one, identify a problem, okay? What is the problem that you see around your Hamsa, you are in Morocco, Casablanca? What is something that's really bothering you? This problem, and for the most part, this problem has to be attached to your passion, to your values, to your gifts, you know? So you, you can have fun as you build it from scratch, from the bottom, um, you know? So you can have fun in the process. And so you can do it, you know, in a sustainable way, long-term, okay? So find out, identify a problem and come up with a solution. A solution uh, will basically be your business model. You will need to plan, you will need to design and project your business also based on a vision that you have. A vision is the solution for that problem. Okay, let's say um, Hamza, since you are here, let's say, I mean, just write down the problem that you want to resolve so that we'll, we'll work with something specific. What's your idea in form of problem so that you can create a solution in form of a social enterprise? What is it? Is it water? Is water a problem in a village? How, how you, I started an online small business, but I failed. Okay, the next question I was gonna ask, and I discussed about uh, businesses that I failed too. I failed in many businesses all throughout my career. What are the lessons that you learned in that failure? Were you really passionate about? What are the reasons why it failed? But that's history. We're looking into future, future right? What do you want to do? 
what do you want to do? What social enterprise? What problem do you want to solve? Okay, is it water? I was just uh, brainstorming here. I is it water? Is your idea to bring clean water to a community? Okay, just start from there. Okay, and then build a model around it. Build a brand around it. A brand means it can't, like uh, uh, the symbols that will represent your concept. Note that before it is a concept, it is an idea. So there is a process of developing a business, of developing an idea. You have an idea to uh, uh, create, uh, I don't know, a, a social enterprise to distribute. Leticia said it's education. Okay, I have experience and ideas, but I don't know to restart. Okay, you are in the right place, you know? It's a process. It's a process. Like I said, it takes time and you have to be patient. Okay, so once you have the idea, you have to conceptualize the idea. It has to make sense in your head and in other people's heads. So you come up with the MPV, the minimum product value. And we said earlier in class here today that entrepreneurs create value. So you'll be able, you should be able to create a minimum value that is a product that is sell sellable. I feel uncomfortable, but I'm still in my comfort zone. Okay, Hamza, you feel uncomfortable. Okay. So I'm, I'm responding, I'm, I'm answering your questions. And, you know, just, just bear with me. We'll get to you and we'll, we'll get there together. Okay, so um, idea, concept, business model, right? This is a process. We're gonna talk about that. When you talk about the business model, how do you create value? What's your value proposition that you're bringing to the market? How are people, Will, how, how are people gonna benefit from this value that you are creating, this idea? Remember, it starts small. A seed starts small before you, like a tree, before you see a tree, it started from a, a seed, right? <laughs> Mango tree, papaya, seeds. <laughs> so you have to create a mindset of persistence, patience, that's actually the first thing. And think about that analogy of a seed, right? So just start from the seed. Identify that one seed, that one problem, and then we'll go. We'll go. We'll get there, okay? That was your next question, how to start, uh, how to start from the bottom. Start small. Start small. Um, and then you said how to you have big ideas and you want to bring those big ideas into fruition. All I can say here is three things. Process, people, only think of process. Start from where you are and with the right mind mindset, with the proper mindset for you to follow the process and invite people to help you amplify and to help you implement your big idea, okay? And process, it's a process. Today is the first step, right? Today is the first step. You have to come back next time, <laughs> at least, right? Um, tomorrow, you might get insights because it's already in your mind. You might get insights, write it down, right? Because the dots, the, that information will make sense later. Steve Jobs says that 
things begin to make sense when you connect the dots looking back. I'm just rephrasing it. <laughs> like you have to just start to collect, work with what you have, collect, write it down. You know, as entrepreneurs, you have to be students, you know, continue. Uh, uh, education, okay, Leticia said, oh, yes, that's her name actually, uh, uh, education. So start from you to educate yourself. And when you learn about a topic, share that with other people and charge them <laughs> because of sustainability purposes, right? Take notes, take notes. I have here, I have like, look, just so in my backpack, because I, I always, this, this is like, I come out every day I have this. I'm always taking notes. I'm always learning. That's the journey of an entrepreneur. And I have my book. I don't know. I published the book recently. So I'm unpacking the book. I'm doing, you have to be active. And you are at the right time to start something big because you have energy. You have resources, you have people, you know, I'm not charging. So, and I learned with self-made millionaires, you know, what I'm sharing with you. I have, I have had mentors. I still have mentors. So learn with other people, be active, uh, be proactive. Also a lot of ideas in my head. And sometimes I'm confused because when trying to do a pretty, uh, pretty things at the same time, you found yourself doing nothing. You got it. <laughs> You're just reflecting actually. Uh, Hamza, I hear you reflecting and this is very good because today we're starting with the who and you're just like going into this inner uh, reflection and you're just saying, okay, I started a business, but it failed. So you actually in the spirit of this first session today, and I'm happy, please continue to uh, write down, please continue to analyze, please continue to bring that about. That is going to give you what I said earlier, positioning. Where are you currently? And where can you go, right? If you want to travel from Morocco, Hamza, you are in Morocco. If you want to travel from Casablanca to say, what's the closest country there? My geography, I don't know. Come to Angola. If you want to uh, travel and meet with Leticia over there, um, if you want to do that, you have to like make plans first, you know? Uh, because entrepreneurship is really art and science at the same time. You have to be creative and bring that balance. You also have to bring science and to know certain notions, to know certain tools, have certain tools and, and concepts and things like that, you know. But if you want to go to Angola, we inviting you. Leticia just threw a smile there. You have to plan where you're going to stay. Do you speak Portuguese? We speak Portuguese in Angola. Are you going to buy a dictionary? Is there an app that will help you navigate into the cities of the country? How are you going to go? I heard somebody walked from Casablanca to Angola. I'm sure you're not going to walk. <laughs> Plane ticket, right? You, you, you have enough money. You're gonna, you know, all of these things, it's a process. No, I don't speak Portuguese, haha. <laughs> okay, see, get an app. <laughs> it's, that's just an example, right? Um, so you have, it's really a process, guys. It is a process. Nobody becomes successful. Nobody brings things into fruition just like this, like overnight. It's probably an, over, an overnight after many years, <laughs> you know, in order for you to understand and know something, you have to spend time thinking about that, doing that thing for a thousand hours for you to become a master. So mastery is important in the process. That's what I say. Is it a thousand? 
I think it's a thousand or 10,000. I think it's a 10,000. I don't know. So just calculate, you know, your hours in the year. If you are getting closer to be an, a, a master in one particular thing. So keep doing, keep working, keep practice every day, every day. I always say nobody, you know, develop muscles, lifting up napkins. <laughs> I live the napkin. You know, you have to lift up weight <laughs> so you can have some muscles. You know, I practiced martial arts for a few years, so I probably have that. And, and <laughs> so, but I had to practice, you know, I, I had to do handstands. I failed so many times. I'm like, you know, people kicking me and stuff, you know, but one thing that I learned and I brought that to entrepreneurship is that you have to be ready for the unexpected. Stay ready so you don't have to, to like be ready all the time. So when you go into the social entrepreneurship uh, field, you have to be a leader, that mindset of a leader, and you have to keep going, keep doing, keep a, 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 an open mind, learn with other people, just stay active, stay active. Uh, and choose one thing at a time. Uh, Hamza, you said that you have a lot of ideas. Just pick one, just one. Work on that one first. Feel, you know, because everything have, has uh, cycles of development. Businesses, enterprises have cycles of development. So um, of growth. So you need to understand those things. You need to, to master those things in order for you to actually do one thing, make something, and, uh, and, and you have to be intentional. Very important, that's what I asked you before. You have to be intentional. Let me tell you a, a funny story. I said, uh, I, I'm, shy. I'm, I'm I'm an introvert. It doesn't look like that, I'm an introvert. And um, <laughs> smart goals, you can work with that too. Um, you know, the sky is the limit. Uh, so I'm, I'm an introvert. And, and when I started mentoring and developing businesses and start putting myself out there, especially in, in Angola, I said, wow, I need more people to know about these things that I have to share. So I'm gonna put myself in the public eye. And I did, I was like, oh my God, uh, I did. It is also important that we network and that we put ourselves out there for people to know what we are doing. Even if you are shy, even if you get out of your comfort zone, I did. And I say, I'm gonna do one thing. I'm gonna like share ideas with people. I'm gonna uh, mentor people, train people. I'm gonna be a leader. I'm gonna develop business. I did all of that. But I also want people to know what I'm doing to inspire them. And years ago, I had my PR and, and they said, okay, so they have Forbes, right? The magazine. And they said, um, uh, you know, we wanna do a story on you, but we wanna know what, how much you make, <laughs> much money you make. Say, so, no, that's not my message. That's not my thing. That's not part of my value. I'm not uh, here to sell, um, I'm making money, a lifestyle, this, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm selling, you know, entrepreneurship in the sense of innovation and creating value. And they said, okay, Forbes works like this. I say, go Forbes, bye-bye, you know, Forbes Angola, Lusophone and stuff. Years after, they actually published a story on me but I did not tell them <laughs> how much I make. It was based on what I'm doing. And remember, that was my intention. That was my vision. It was clear. That's, that was that, that one thing. I could have said, no, oh, it's not going to work. I really have to tell them so that I can, you know, create that credibility and stuff. But I said, no, that's not my intention. When you have an intention and you persist and stay on it, it's going to happen. That's just a lot. 
and you work on it, it's going to happen. That has happened in my life and many other people's lives. So pick one thing, uh, Hamza, um, and persist, work on it. Every day you wake up with that passion. Remember I told you to write down your passion with that passion and, and you just be, you know, so inspired, enthusiastic about your life. And people are asking where you're going. You say, I got somewhere to go. Sometimes it's not clear. A little motivation that I'm giving you right now. Sometimes it's not clear, but keep going. Keep moving. Keep moving. <laughs> Don't stop. So those things that you have in, in your mind can be confused. Yeah, that's fine. Somebody said um, uh, smart goals. What, what the, does it mean? Sis, uh, uh, I actually developed a smart methodology. Uh, measurable. I can't remember those. But <laughs> if it works for you, you know, whatever works for you, use it. Whatever tools work for you, use it. But your intention is to be a leader in the social enterprise, entrepreneurship. Do it. We're going to share with you uh, tools, insights, concepts. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, Whatever you need, we will we'll be happy to provide mentoring, uh, uh, assistance, whatever that we can do to help you and assist you. Yeah, that's it, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, timely. That's good. Uh, like I say, uh, bit some, sometimes those smart goals work, sometimes they don't. And uh, to me, actually, the moment I start are uh, thinking about specific measure, but Shiva, but reality, you know, I, I get tired, you know, because I'm a conceptual thinker and a very intuitive uh, action taker. So when I see those words, they actually, uh, I'll be like thinking of the words, trying to make sense out of it instead of doing. I'm more like, just do it kind of goals. <laughs> Nike, just do it. Yeah, just do it. So we have a few more minutes. Anybody else wants to um, come in and share comments, questions, uh, insights, come and share, come and share. The more you give, the more you receive, okay? So share. Anybody? Barbara just uh, logged in. I don't see faces. I'm just seeing my own face here on this Zoom room. I want people to interact. Buadi, how are you? Thank you for showing your face. Everybody left me here, just myself try, showing my face. <laughs> Did you just log in? Where are you typing from? Hey, Hamza, yeah, faces, faces. I know Leticia put her face there, but it's not moving, so it's a picture. We cannot hear you, okay. Um, anybody, Hamza, you wanna come in and talk to us again since nobody else is doing that? Because we have two hours, maybe we'll finish early. Typing from Ghana, I, 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 I just quoted Blitz, the ambassador, do you know him? Yes. So I met Blitz, the ambassador in Brooklyn, and I, I put his album, Afropolitan Dream on repeat, especially when I'm running in the streets of Luanda because, you know, I need some inspiration. And I shared here uh, one line that I always use. All I had, this is when I went to New York. All I had was a dollar in the dream. And I went to New York with a dollar in the dream. I, I shared that, oh, Leticia is here. See, we're getting ready to take the group pictures shortly. 
That's great, people. You are the leaders. You are the legacy builders. You are the, um, what else? The, the social entrepreneurs. You're building things. You know, people will notice you because you've taken that responsibility of being leaders and leaders show the way. And you are here to learn. You are here to share. You are here to connect, most importantly, to connect with other people, you know, and, 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 and have fun. I like to have fun. Um, this is nice. Anybody wants to make any comments, say something, questions, share what you wrote down on your notes, whatever topics we discussed today, whoever came in late, we're just starting from the who today, who you are, for your ideas. Yeah, buddy, you're welcome. I'm here to serve. This is exciting, you know, this is really, we are living in very exciting times because the world is changing and this is the perfect time for us to become change, change makers as well. <laughs> this is the best time for us to build structures. I started to research about social entrepreneurship and social businesses many years ago. Um, and I read a book, you know, at the time, even, I think it was dial-up internet. I don't remember, but, you know, um, the concept, because I always had this social thing in me. I always want to create impact and to create social value. And uh, I think I Googled at the time, that was many years ago, like going to 20 years, uh, uh, I think. And, and I found a book about social business, social business. Last question. Okay, let me just finish here, Hamza, I'll let you uh, come in. And I, I, I read a book uh, by Mohammed Moha. I'm sorry if I misspell it, Mohammed Hunos. Uh, I'm not gonna be sorry about that. So you're gonna, I guess for, for, uh, for uh, your homework, you're gonna research on the term of social entrepreneurship and start from Mohammed uh, Hunos. Uh, pa, pa, pa. I can spell, I can't even spell my, my own name sometimes, my own name, Mohammed. Okay, so what is the best? Okay, I'm going to write down his name here. It's Moha, okay. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, okay. That's it. Um, social business that's that's something that you can uh, i started with him many years ago starting to deconstruct deconstruct this uh notion of social business creating social uh, value social um um uh, uh, value social ent enterprises social business um, it starts with the problem, really. I, I cover that. It's it really, this is as, it's that simple. It starts with a problem and you're thinking of a solution. Um, okay, questions. Okay, I see a question here. Uh, screenshot. Yeah, 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 please do. Uh, thanks, Prince. Uh, what is, yeah, take pictures. What is the best for start online business, start alone or with team? Hamza, I don't know, uh, it depends. 
in, in on so many factors, you know. Um, I'm also a mentor of the Founders Institute. Founders Institute was founded in Silicon Valley. And they offer, I, I believe they have an accelerator, acceleration program there in Morocco. Um, so I think it's a good way to start. It's a, it's a good way to start. Join a, uh, I'm not publicizing or anything. It's just something, uh, just join uh, um, an incubator, join, uh, you know, learn from other people. Don't reinvent the wheel. <laughs> You know, sit down with somebody that that did did that already. You know, in your ecosystem uh, in 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 Morocco, Casablanca, you might because you know when you sit down with somebody that's experienced in that in that area, you know, of building an online business. Uh, you know, if it's two years, that person will put in, in one, in two, two hours or two minutes. It will compound in two minutes. So it is important to start uh, by learning. And then when you learn, you know, depending on your personality, depending on your resources, you decide if you want to, and, and your skill set as well, right? Because when you're starting a business, you need to fulfill many functions, the marketing, operations, day-to-day, -day, technology, this, this, and that. Can you do all of that? Hamza, can you do all of that? If the answer is no, then find somebody else to do it so that you can fulfill you know, all of those main functions, all of those core functions. And once you fulfill that, you won't like, as you are in the process of developing your online business, you won't feel so frustrated, right? And, and think that the problem is in you, but you know, it's just, sometimes it's just a matter of us looking into the big picture. That's why you need to start by learning. Once you know the nuances, once you know the, the the pieces, the components that your, your business needs, then you decide if you start it alone or with a team. And that team, you know, can be like one or two people. It doesn't have to be you do human resources, you do that. Analyze the functions. Look at the functions that you need for your first stage, you know, the first stage. And then you plan, I mentioned earlier, uh, plan, you know, but that planning, you know, it's not those like long documents of business plan. No one has time for that. It's just too much sometimes. You can adopt the uh, methodology of agile, uh, meaning, you know, you want to keep doing, keep going, but your period of uh, doing things is shorter. The business plan was three years, five years, six years, you know, uh, boring to me at least, but the agile methodology says you plan, you act, you implement, and then you evaluate. And, and so you grow incrementally. If you decide to grow your business like week by week, then you plan for that week, you implement, you know, use Trello, okay? Use Trello to do doing done. You wanna have, you wanna see progress as you develop in your business, you wanna see progress. So you plan to do, I need to do this. Don't do like a huge list. And this is why I say the smart goals and stuff, you know, sometimes they're not, they're, they're too far ahead, but you wanna do something that's gonna keep you motivated. Uh, that's gonna keep you motivated. So plan, how do you wanna uh, uh, develop your business? Agile is really agile. Uh, this week, I'm, I'm starting this week. What's today, Wednesday? 
um, I, I need to come up with a name. You don't need, you, you actually don't need money to, 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 to think of a name. Come on guys. Some people say, oh, I don't have money. I can't start no business. No, just, you know, think of a name. Think of the concept, do research, you know, in that business. You need to learn about that business, about the nuances of that business, about the dynamics of, of the business, you know, benchmark, look for examples. Benchmark means, you know, this is, this is an example, this is what I want to do. And you use that as, as you know, as, as a, as uh, I want to say a compass, so, so to speak. I'm trying to break down so everybody will understand. So uh, Hamza, I don't know if, I, if, if you are clear. I took about five minutes to answer your question. Anybody else has a question? Morocco, people in Morocco, I, you know, this is why I want to go there because uh, Bitson participated, Angola, okay, Leticia participated, uh, Morocco, Ghana, okay, it's because Bwari, okay, too, South Africa, come on. <laughs> Any questions? Any comments? If not, we're gonna have to like, just say goodbye until next week. What are, what, what are you building? What are, what are the challenges that you're facing right now? You can ask. No? Okay, I, then I'm just gonna call. <laughs> okay, it's okay. We can we can uh, finish. Okay. okay, can anyone go into online? Okay, Barbara. Okay, okay, go ahead, uh, Bitson. I'm sorry. I I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm I'm pronounce, pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, okay, it's Tisa. Oh, Tisa. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Uh, okay, you're welcome. So thank you so much for uh, doing this, uh, giving these courses. Uh, and I'm glad to be here. Uh, uh, well, there are two, two things. The first one is, as you were saying, the conceptual uh, part. Uh, uh, for, for me, for example, sometimes I say before starting doing a business, a business or working on a social uh, uh, work, I, I would say I will have to, to read about social entrepreneurship. I will have to read how to do uh, projects. I will have to read books, do courses, etc. But the other part is I will just jump. I have the idea. I will ju just jump, go in, doing into action directly. And I've I've heard I've heard uh, facilitators, uh, the people who are um, into into that, they facilitate and they coach and they mentor. Uh, workshops about doing uh, projects uh, in industry or in um, social uh, entrepreneurship, they say uh, just jump in it. And others say, no, you have to go through a process. So what, what, what's your say on that? Um, it's actually both, you know, and it depends on a person. Me, personally, I just go and I, I learn as I grow, I learn as I, as I go. But there is a higher risk, you know, you have to think of the risk factor. When you learn, when you take time to research, to learn and to read, it doesn't have to, you know, to, to, to be like a lot of learning, just to a point where you are comfortable with the notion, with the concept of social entrepreneurship. You read till that point because you will continue to, uh, to, to, to learn, right? So, but if you wanna be comfortable, it really depends on a person. If you want to uh, like jump in with a, a, a higher level of, of comfort and perhaps a lower level of risk, uh, then that's it. Jump in. It's 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 okay. You know, I gave you guys an example when I started. I was a teenager. I didn't know anything, but I was doing things right. 
Now, and, and I also gave you examples that uh, um, I started other businesses and they failed. They didn't work. They didn't last for uh, the time I was expecting them to last, okay? Uh, but I learned lessons. So if you jump in, you will learn as you go and you'll learn lessons, even if you fail, even if the risk is higher. Okay, it really depends on the person. If you choose to research first and learn and, and do, you know, your actions will be uh, uh, implemented with more precision, right? Because you understand the notions, you understand the concepts. So it will be more precise. You won't be, you know, shooting at any direction. When you know, you act with more precision. And I said earlier that we want to attain, continue to attain mastery, right? So you do, you read, you do. It's really a process. There is a sequence. So it's not really a linear process. You know, it's more like a spiral process. There will be moments that will go do a, 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 a revolution and you will evolve to the next level. But at one point you will have to learn a few lessons on the other level and you're gonna have to go back to correct that and then move up, okay? So the process is not linear. This one, two, three, you can go one, two, three and then go back four because you didn't take the time to learn. That can happen too. Right, it really depends on your style. I hope I answered the question. Yes. Hamson, I did. Tyson. Yes, yeah. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much. Also, there's the, the other, uh, another part, which is uh, 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 networking, uh, mm -hmm. uh, doing, uh, attending like uh, uh, events or participating in events. Even if like, you don't know anything about that thing, you just go there and uh, there are facilitators, there, there are workshops you do, you, you, you work in groups, you come up with ideas in group mm -hmm. and fully, so yeah. Also networking is a, good, is a good thing. You find people who are already doing projects, you learn from them, how they started, what's their stories, etc. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, you, you wanna get into that process of learning However, uh, uh, you know, manner you, however way feels uh, easier for you to learn, right? Networking is very important. I said earlier that your network is your net worth. Um, yes. You know, sometimes, yeah, yeah. So it's really, really important. I can't stress you enough, uh, stress this enough. Um, it builds also, you know, credibility, you know, if people are talking about, it's this thing that uh, lately people call personal branding. When you go to networking, and this is why we started with the who, because it also has to do with your personal branding. And when you have that down, when you have your personal branding, you know, your position, it's easier for you to go out there and provide your offer. Remember, you give first, you serve first before you receive. That's, that's uh, the best way to go. Because you don't wanna go and you don't have any, nothing to share, nothing to offer. You, know? you wanna know what you have to give, even if it's just a quote. You know, when you go to networking events, you get there and say, you know, I read this quote today and people are like, hmm, I like that. And then you start a conversation with that. But always have something to give before you expect to receive. Work on your personal brand. The exercise that we did today was on the who. That's going to lead you for you to start to work on your personal brand. And you might want to write that down. Uh, because that's one thing that you have to do. That's why we started with the who, uh, the skills, the passions, the gifts, the talents, the, the values, uh, your, your purpose and things like that. 
all of those things will be, and you have to be conscious of that. You have to be aware of those. All of those things will help you to build a brand as a leader, as a social entrepreneur, whatever, as an uh, entrepreneur, as an online business and stuff. But you have to know who you are. You have to know where you are in order to go out in the world and, and make your offer that other people can benefit. Remember, as an entrepreneur, you have to create value constantly and you bring value to the market. You bring value to the society because it's so to the society. So you, you, you want to work on yourself you want to find discipline, right? You, you have to be disciplined. That's what's going to get you to success. You have to have this mindset of, 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 of persistence, tenacity, right? You have to keep going. You have to keep. It's really a practice, a daily practice. And um, that's how you grow. Yes. Um, great question. Thank you for your questions. Um, what is the best way to start an online? Uh, Barbara said, can anyone go into online business? Barbara, um, it's best that you align what you do to your gifts, talent, passions, purpose. It'll make your journey easier and you will learn uh, um, you know, easier, in an easier way, okay? Can anyone go into online business? Yes. <laughs> you can do whatever you put your mind into, right? But for the purpose of this class or, you know, what I'm motivating you to do is to create something that's based on your passions, right? Yes, you might, and, and, and that's your biggest vision, right? As a leader, the, 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 the theme of this, uh, um, of this uh, 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 masterclass is social entrepreneurship and leadership, okay? Uh, if you're gonna do, if your social enterprise is online, everything is online nowadays. <laughs> You know, when you say online business, what does it mean? This is online. What, what do you mean online business? Is it e-commerce? Most businesses are online these days. You have to be specific, first of all, because everybody's on. We're doing business online right now. Uh, one African firm is doing his core, you know, his core business online right now. So you have to be specific. What do you mean by online business. And I have to go back to that because Hamza said that he used to have an online business. I, I just assumed that it was an e-commerce business. But nowadays people have courses online, uh, people sell online, uh, people, uh, you know, and all kinds of things, you know. Online business is very generic. What's your industry? Is it knowledge industry? Is it beauty industry? Is it products industry? Is it clothing, shoes, what? Cars, uh, what is it? Food, healthy food, super food. What is it? That's why I asked you guys earlier to think of that one thing that you want to do, to think of that one problem that you want to solve. Hi, uh, uh, Gertrude. Does following your passion always pay off? You know, it's, it's like this, right? Uh, thank you for your question. Most of the times, yes. <laughs> Most of the times, yes. Um, and I'm saying this based on my observation and perspective, right? And I can explain that from a more, uh, 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 I want to say, not esoteric or spiritual or uh, quantum physics, right? Whatever you focus on or whatever you vibrate, you attract that one thing to you, right? If you're always thinking of, you know, uh, of something negative, that's what you're going to attract, 
right? But when you leave your uh, passion, you're going to attract that which you wish to achieve. So does following your passion always pay off? For the most part, yes. But again, it that word always is also a relative word, you know? Um, I don't like to say like it, it is guaranteed 100%. You know, because it's life, we don't have formulas and people naturally, human beings are always looking for shortcuts, are always looking for, uh, you know, things like yesterday, I need this yesterday, you know, you'll hear people like so fast, we got to go, I, I, I need this yesterday, you know, people think that success comes overnight, all of these things, right, but my message is not about like uh, quick success. My message is about building. My message is about following processes and trusting the process. Now, if you come into this class, I'm giving you, I'm gonna give you, like I said, concepts, tools, experience, stories, uh, uh, data, uh, information from other people, not too much, so we won't get lost, uh, but I'll give you all of that. And then you're gonna organize that to fit your own reality, okay? There is not one formula that works for this person, for that, for, but I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that if you, if you uh, do things based on your passion, you know, you'll be happy. Uh, and you have fun in the process. And it doesn't matter what other people say, because sometimes we don't follow our passion, we don't follow our gifts or talents, you know, um, because we're too concerned about what other people say. And you are young people, you know that. So just stay focused on your vision, stay focused on that, uh, that you are building and the rest will, will be compensated. You know, the rest will be, comp uh, will be compensated. Any more qu questions? We are about to finish. I guess we plan to be here for two hours, Prince. <laughs> I think we're ready. Prince, you you are you on mute. All right, thank you so much, Lucia. And um, yeah, thank you very much for that. And I'm pretty sure everyone learned today. So hi guys, I am pretty sure you learned a lot today. I'd like you to just leave a comment on two or two on our social media page, you know, follow. If you go to our social media page, in case you don't know Lucia's uh, page, just scroll through and see the photo that we had for this very for this very event. She's tagged on it, and then you can just go to her page as well. Just leave a comment or two on what you have learned today on that very post, you know. And uh, let's see, let more people come in as well. We have this number here. We want to double it and triple it next week. And if you have any question that has not been addressed today, don't worry. We're meeting again next week. Wednesday, and uh, to continue on this very conversation. I'm pretty sure you have learned a lot. So please, whatever you have learned today and whatever you learn throughout this session, do uh, make do well to ensure that you implement these things in your little corner, all right? In your, from your homes, right? Just on your streets, you know, in your community, look around and implement them. If there's something more you wanna learn, you know, um, just network, connect with people, reach out to Lucia, reach out to Ross. Let's get a talk. Let's see how we could help you as well. But I'm sure you have learned today and I'm really excited about this class and I'm looking forward to us having more sessions again going forward. And um, I wish I could see everyone's face smiling already today. I can see mm -hmm. the teeth. I see Lucia smiling already. How I wish I could see, oh yeah, thank you, buddy. I wish I could see everyone smiling, even as we call it on a day today. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tabi. Uh, I see that as well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. So, everyone, if you could just do us a favor, just send an emoji, maybe a thumbs up or a smile or something. Send it right now. While we are there, uh, you can send it on the, thumbs, on the chat session. 
just put out there. Let's see that smile and prepare for next week as well. Just do something. Send an emoji. Just do something. Do something, everyone. <laughs> Thank you all very much for this wonderful session. Thank you. Yes, that's from Jetru. Thank, Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Prince. Thank you. We'll continue to build. I will continue together. Thank you so much. So everyone, yeah. bye everyone. Have a nice session bye -bye. and have a lovely bye -bye. evening and morning wherever you're joining from. I'll see you. Bye. Bye.